I just uh, take the, the batteries, that's yeah, right, okay, put that on there like this. Wow. And the, the wire that goes onto there, okay. And touch the... Wow! Hey, that's really amazing! You know, I never would have thought it would have... We're recording again? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I'm sorry everybody at home there. It's Professor Pumpernickel here again in the laboratory as you can see. It's time for uh, the next installment of the Eureka at Home series of videos. And this week's topic is all about love. You know I love you all out there Professor Pumpernickel fans. I'm also going to talk about attraction. Yes, but not the kind of kind of attraction. No, no. I know Professor Pumpernickel has that stuff in spades. I mean, Mrs. Pumpernickel was highly attracted to my hairy chest. Shh, don't tell her it was a fake one. <laughs> but I thought we could talk a little bit about magnetism. I have some really cool experiments for you guys to try at home. And my first experiment is also a survival tip. If you ever get lost in the wilderness and you cannot find your way home again, all you need to find your way home and get the right direction of travel is the content of a sewing kit and the leaf from a bush. That's right. So how can we find our way home just using the contents of a sewing kit and a little leaf off a bush. Well, the secret is inside of the sewing kit. Inside the sewing kit, you'll have some of these. It's a needle, yes? And this needle is made with iron. And iron is a magnetic chemical element. Iron has four unpaired electrons, and that means they're free to be manipulated as we wish. And we can manipulate those electrons to point in all the same direction with one of these. It's a magnet. Now, to make your magnetic needle pointer, what we're going to do is arrange all of the electrons which make up the atoms inside of this iron needle. And they're currently just pointing in all kinds of different directions in any which way possible. Okay, well what we're going to do, using this small magnet, we're going to line them up in an order, like a military marching band, yes? All lined up pointing in the same direction, and it's very easy to do that. All you need to do is take a magnet, place it onto your needle at one end, and then draw the magnet down the needle. You need to repeat this a few times down the needle and we're going to do this for at least 15 seconds. So now that we have our electrons all pointing in a nice row, uh, what we're going to do is take the needle and the leaf I was uh, showing you just earlier is now floating in a bowl of water. And the leaf is like a little boat, and the passenger to the boat is the needle. So let's drop the needle in and see what happens to the leaf. Can you see it rotating? Right. It should stop round about now. Now, you may think this is just me blowing or uh, manipulating it in some way. But if I just give it a little encouragement to point the opposite direction and uh, we'll see that it does in fact revert back to its original position because all of those electrons are now aligned the needle has become a magnet itself it has its own magnetic field it has a north and it has a south and it is now aligned itself with the Earth's magnetic field. So what we've actually made is a real accurate compass. And it's as simple as using a needle, a leaf, a bowl of water, and of course, those magnets. Woo!
<laughs> so that's a really great survival tip for when you're next in the jungle on one of your big adventures. But let's say you don't have any magnets in your pocket with which to manipulate the electrons in the iron needle. What are you going to do then? Not everybody walks around with pockets full of magnets. Well, if you are on an adventure, then you might just have a flashlight or a torch. And inside of those flashlights and torches are batteries. And with a simple battery and some copper wire, you can make yourself an electromagnet. Here's how to do that. To make your electromagnet, you need a few things. First of all, you need some copper wire. Coat it in a very thin plastic, and that's going to be important. Next, you're going to need a couple of crocodile clips, one on each end. Okay, so I've got two, red and black, positive and negative. You're also going to need a battery. That's why I have the drill here, and I'm going to remove the battery from the cordless drill. We're going to use this battery. You'll also need some objects made of iron uh, or steel, something with iron in them. Now, I have made my electromagnet with the copper wire wound around a hollow iron pipe. And this is what I just found in my, uh, my scrap metal bin, you see. And I've made around about 200 windings, 200 turns of the copper wire. The more windings you make, the stronger the electromagnetic field will be when you pass electricity through it. Now, if you don't have a hollow iron pipe, uh, don't worry, just pick yourself up anything which is uh, steel or iron, and uh, you can use a bolt like this, you could even use a screwdriver, you could use all kinds of things, actually. So let's connect this up to the electric battery here, and we'll see what happens. First of all, we've got to connect the red cable to the, uh, the positive terminal on the battery, and the black one to the negative terminal on the battery. There we go. And now we will connect the positive electrode to this wire here. Now, to make your wire conductive for the electricity at the ends, all I've done is taken a small piece of sandpaper and rubbed the wire gently to remove that very thin plastic film that coats the wire, okay? And that comes off really easily. So that when I uh, touch these nails here, none of them are being picked up because we do not have an electric circuit. Once we complete the circuit, we then have an electromagnet. Check it out. Look at that. Electromagnet, boys and girls. Isn't that incredible? The Homo Polar Electric Motor. How to make your Homo Polar Electric Motor super duper simple. Just grab yourself a battery, a couple of small magnets, a nail or a screw, cut yourself two pieces of cardboard, okay, just a cornflakes packet or anything like that, and a small piece of electrical wire. I'm sure you might have a scrap piece of electrical wire lying around. All I've done is I've removed the insulation from both ends so that the copper wire can be seen, okay? Bring it across like this, just held by the magnets, and then take your screw or your nail, attach it to the magnets, make sure it's in the middle. Man, I love these Homo Polar Electric Motors. Anyway, it's not time to leave you just yet. Of course, we had a competition last week. Last week, I asked you who termed the tensegrity structure. And it was, of course, Buckminster Fuller. And uh, the winners to that competition with the correct answer were Chloe and Alice Collins. So well done, Chloe and Alice. You've won yourselves a goodie bag each with a family pass to Eureka. So please come on down and meet Professor Pumpy Knickers. I mean, Pumpernickel. Well, we have another competition this week with a chance to win yourself a goodie bag and a pass to Eureka to bring along all of your family as well for free, for totally for free. And here is the question. 
What is the name of the hormone released by the pituitary gland in the brain when we fall in love? I'll say that again. What is the name of the hormone that is released by the pituitary gland in the brain when we fall in love? It gives us that lovely, cozy feeling when we're madly in love, okay? I want you to write the name of that hormone in the comment section just below this video and I'll announce the winners next week. So, lots of love from me to you. As always, stay safe, have fun, and goodbye for now.